B. Uh, if interest is imply, applied using a compound interest method, and if it's applied annually, uh, well then the future value is equal to PV times 1 plus I raised to the power of T. And this is the annual, the annual case. Okay. Uh, we can also generalize this to be uh, to be a situation where there's more than one compounding happening in a period of time. Okay, so this can get generalized again. Okay, to the future value is equal to the principal value times one plus i over n raised to the power of n times t, and this is our general compounding. General compounding. And let's just have a look at some examples here. Okay, uh, we have a number of different types of compoundings. We could have the annual case, annual compounding. That means n is equal to one. And you can see that when n is equal to one, it means that there's only one compounding in our in our periods of time or in our years. So this formula here reduces down to this formula here because i over one is just i. One times t is just t. Okay, let's say we have semi-annually. Okay. Semi-annually means, the semi-annual case means that there's two compoundings in a period of time. So n is equal to 2. So this formula would be the future value is equal to the principal value times 1 plus i over 2 raised to the power of 2 times t. Okay. Uh, let's say we have the quarterly case. Quarterly. So quarterly means that there's four compoundings in a period of time. So n is equal to 4. So our formula would be future value is equal to the principal value times 1 plus i over 4 raised to the power of 4 times t. In the monthly case, monthly, we'd have n is equal to 12. And the future value would be the future value is equal to the principal value times 1 plus i over 12 raised to the power of 12 times t. Uh, and I suppose we could go back up in this way where instead of annually we go biannually every two years biannually okay biannually okay uh, this time n is okay well it takes two years for one compounding which means that in one year there's a half of a compounding so n is equal to a half and with a little small bit of algebra when you divide by a fraction it's the same as inverting and multiplying this becomes the future value is equal to the principal value times 1 plus 2i raised to the power of t over 2 okay uh, I know we took a little bit of a jump from the annual case into the general compounding case, uh, but let's just be reassured that this particular formula is a simple extension of this particular formula, but this time where we've got more compoundings happening uh, over the number of years. Actually, if you think about it from a semi-annual perspective, there's two compoundings happening in a year. So after t years, there would have been two t compoundings. Okay. And the interest rate is halved uh, for each one of those compoundings. Similarly, in a quarterly perspective, there's four compoundings happening in a period of time. So over t years, there would be four times t compoundings. And in each period of time, there's a quarter of the interest being applied in each case. Okay. So guys, I hope this video was informative. The next video in this particular series will look at the application of compound interest from a specific example perspective. Okay, so once again, guys, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Thank you.